It's an issue that had set the government on a collision course with Europe, whether to give those behind bars the right to vote for those in here. I don't want prisoners to have the vote and they shouldn't get the vote. I'm very clear um, about that. Now, just before a deadline to comply with European law to do exactly the opposite, the government has come up with a possible way out. Draft legislation that will allow MPs to vote on a blanket ban or giving only prisoners serving shorter sentences the vote. This is very much really what we were recommending from the beginning, that they should put the issue to the House of Commons in a piece of legislation and let the House of Commons choose. And they've, they've effectively said they're going to do that. We'll have a choice of doing what the court wants, which is any, everybody under four years in prison, uh, a compromise, everybody under six months, and an outright rejection. And I am reasonably sure the House will, in fact, go for outright rejection. Former prisoner John Hurst, who killed his landlady with an axe, took the government to the European Court of Human Rights over the issue. What they've been told by Europe, and quite firmly, is you will do this, you must do this. If you do not do this, then they will rule on the 3,500 cases backlogged in the European Court of Human Rights and award damages to them. Charities and some Labour MPs questioned the wisdom of not abiding by international law. Giving them a vote isn't going to solve everything, but it does give some sense of responsibility, does give some sense of choice, and does give some sense of involvement in the community, and that's got to be the right way forward. Any new legislation is likely to take years to come into force, and it's by no means certain that MPs would opt for even limited voting rights. So prisoners hoping to head to the polls in the next election could well be disappointed.